This is an overview of multivariate regression with the Temperature Control Lab. We're going to use empirical and physics-based models. Here is the link if you'd like to follow along with all of the source code. And so if you select that, it'll open up a page with a description of what we're trying to do here, which is minimize the sum of squared errors or the integral absolute error uh, some or some of absolute errors between the model predicted values and the measured values. So we're going to judge our model performance with this integral absolute error. It's going to be the temperature difference, and then you multiply by uh, the time difference, which is one second. So we just left that off. This is the integral absolute error in discrete form. So we want to adjust the uh, parameters and achieve alignment between the model and measured values very first thing that you'll need to do with this lab is to go ahead and just generate uh, step test data for the model predictions. Uh, so if you have the temperature control lab, just go ahead and generate uh, the temperatures based on the heater inputs that you can see here. The blue and the red, those are the heater inputs at the top and those will produce a temperature response and that's the temperature response that we want to predict with our models. So um, if you don't have the temperature control lab, you can always use this sample data right here. You can see uh, the time, Q1, Q2, T1, and T2. All right. Um, so the very first thing that we're going to do is once we collect that data, is we're going to go ahead and just do a graphical FOPDT fit. And you can grab the source code for this right here. Uh, this is going to be for the Python notebook, and um, I'll just go ahead and grab it down here, the git code. Let me just show you where that is. Um, if you come down at the very bottom, okay, there's this little button that you select to get unformatted code, and go ahead and copy that, and then you can put that into a Jupyter notebook. Right, and then I'll go ahead and run this. And it looks like, oh, PD is not defined. I'll add that back in. Um, I'll just do import pandas as PD. All right, and there we have the model. So big picture, what we're doing here is we're trying to obtain a model, and we're going to use that in controller development later on. Let me just show you the overview, and then we'll run through this exercise and a couple others. Here is an overview of the Process Dynamics and Control course. We have in this section right here, this is to obtain a model of our process. And then this section, this is the controller. Okay, so in the modeling, we first of all start with controller design and selecting the actuators, like in this case our heaters, and the measurements, those are thermistor temperature sensors. And then there's a decision here, if we have data, then we can do a step test and do a graphical fit, which is what we're going to do first. It's gonna be our first exercise here. And then uh, we also have the option of developing physics-based models as well we don't have data, we can use uh, balance equations or other things that we know about the process to simulate those. And if we have a simulation model, we can simulate data and then go back over this way and obtain uh, these empirical models through regression or we can linearize uh, directly and then come back to a first order plus dead time model. That's what we need to be able to develop a controller, or at least some initial tuning parameters for a PID controller. Okay, we're going to do graphical fit just with a first order system. This is going to be a multivariate because we have two heaters and two temperature sensors. So let's start with this, and then we'll review again where we are on this flow chart in terms of doing the modeling. All right, so I'm here and I want to try to match up uh, the dash line with the, uh, the dots. And uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is just increase the gain. 
and also increase the time constant all right so here I have about 185 let me increase this a little further okay let's go a little bit further still all right and then we need some dead time as well it looks like um, the prediction is leading the measured values and so if I put this about 15 seconds or so on the dead time now it looks like um, you know temperature 2 is too low here and so we need this additional disturbance gain to say when temperature 1 is high then it's going to make temperature 2 go up so I'm going to increase this further okay so I have about uh, 0.35 all right, let me increase this a little bit more as well. And this whole time I'm trying to minimize the integral absolute error. So you can see that value change as I adjust these parameters. Let me go up just a little bit more. And it looks like I've dropped down quite a bit. You can see a little bit of air right here and a little air right here. But for the most part, uh, they're on top of each other. All right, so this is our first order plus dead time model. You can see some of the parameters um, right here, the Kp, Kd, tau p, and theta p. Now for the two, um, we have, um, it looks like the other thing I need to do is just change the round off here because it looks like I'm rounding off too many uh, digits. And I'll fix that in the code that's online. Um, and then you can see it on the graph. Okay, I'll put some of these back to about where they were. Okay, so you can see a few more digits here um, when I increase the round off. All right, so now we have uh, these parameters. Uh, the only difference between these for heater one and heater two is that heater two is going to have half the gain and um, for the KP value uh, because the heater is half as powerful. All right, so we have one of our models. Uh, this one is going to be the graphical fit. We have KP, tau P, and theta P. And then we also came up with our disturbance gain, and that's going to be helpful for us later on when we design our feed forward controller. Okay, so this is our first method for obtaining a model is the graphical fit because we had some data and so we were able to do a step test and do a graphical fit. All right, let's um, use an optimizer now instead of the graphical method. We want to use an optimizer to come up with those parameters for us. Um, so we're not guessing and checking, but we're able to iterate many more times with an optimizer and minimize something like a sum of squared errors or sum of absolute value. So if you come back to the page, the next thing that we're going to do is come to, all right, let me go ahead and just, um, after the graphical FOPDT fit right here, the next one is going to be an optimized FOPDT fit. So let's see what an optimizer can do for us. There's some source code right here. I'm not going to go through this. It's very similar to something I've shown already. Um, but the main point here is that we are using the SciPy optimize minimize. And it's right there. We have some bounds on it. And we're using an SLSQP method in order to um, solve that. All right, and so what we want here is just to go ahead and get the code. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and put this into the Jupyter Notebook as well, just inserting a cell below. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and just see how this compares going to start. You can see the initial guess values gave us our objective function 8480. Uh, we started with initial guess values uh, right here. 
Now you could start with initial guess values from your graphical fit if you wanted to. It's going to help it solve a little bit faster. Sometimes these take um, you know 30 seconds, a minute to solve. It depends on how much data you have. There's also a curve fit. Um, if you'd like to try to get curve fit to work or other methods in Python, those are certainly available as well. In this case, it's going to be minimizing the sum of absolute errors or the sum of squared errors. Uh, in this case, it's the sum of absolute errors. There's our objective function that we're trying to minimize. All right, and let me go down here and just see how this is doing. Okay, it's still working on this. So while this is working right here, let me go back to um, this plot or this graph. And this is the path that we're taking right here. We're going to use regression or an optimization solver to solve uh, the problem. In this case, we're using a lower order model. Again, first order model, we're just regressing those same parameters that we got from the graphical fit. And then we can compare them and see how close they are. Okay, and then the uh, third example that we'll do is um, you know, a physics-based model. And uh, so we'll take this route right here. We'll do a physics-based empirical model. And then we could, you know, it's similar to what's written right here. But in this case, we're going to be doing the regression. That's, I guess that's going to be number three. Um, and then we could linearize it and get it back to FOPT form. I'm not going to do that right here, but uh, that's certainly available for you. Um, there is also the linearize work that we did before where we did this exercise on linearization with a single heater model. So you could do that for the dual heater model as well. Okay, let's go back and just see how it's doing. Okay, it's still working on it. Um, it's taking a little while for it to optimize this. Let's just um, give it just a little bit more time. And as we do that, I'll insert another cell below. And then we'll run our regression uh, for the physics-based model. Again, this is a multivariate regression because we have two heater inputs and two temperatures that we're trying to predict. All right, we'll let that keep running with the SciPy optimizer. Sometimes those aren't the best optimizers. I'll show you another one that's a little bit better than the SciPy optimizer. All right, and what we're going to do for this last one is get a physics-based model. And there's a couple examples here. There's another video here as well that will walk you through the parameter estimation of a first order physics based model and uh, that was developed in a previous lab exercise but what we're doing here is just trying to optimize the coefficients of this um, of this model the new thing though that's not in the video is this second one um, I just found that the first order model wasn't very good and so we're going to use a second order physics based model we're going to model the conduction as well as the convection and the radiative heat transfer. The conduction between the heater, which is the T sub H, and the sensor. In this case, that's T sub C. So we have these conduction equations based on Fourier's law. And we're going to condense that down into a single parameter tau, and then estimate that along with our other parameters as well. So in this case, we're going to use um, Python Gecko. And um, this shows the results of my regression. You're going to have different results because you're going to have different uh, data. But I'm going to go down and get this code and then put this into the Jupyter Notebook as well. Okay, I'll copy it and then bring it back to this Jupyter Notebook. And it looks like this just finished. So we'll paste this in and maybe start this one running while we take a look at our prior solution. All right, so here it is. We have our plot with our KP, KD, tau P, and theta P. And then it also shows us our integral absolute error 
which is about 487. So that's very good. There are 1,200 data points here. And um, the absolute error is uh, less than a half a degree for each of the time points across this whole time period. So very good integral absolute error. Uh, it's fitting the data very well. All right, let's go down and just take a look at uh, this for the gecko uh, optimizer. Here are the parameters. So instead of kp, tau p, theta p, um, and kd, we have other ones. Uh, we have the heat transfer coefficient. We have the heat transfer coefficient between the two heaters, which is just a little bit higher. We have alpha 1 and alpha 2, which are the heater uh, parameters. And um, you know, the heater 2 is about half as powerful as heater 1. So you can see that value is about half of the one right above it. And then we have that tau value. That was our conduction parameter. And then this gives us our sum of absolute error. So very close to what we had before. Just a little bit worse, but uh, still very good than the empirical approach. Okay, so let's just go back to the overview. Of what we've done here, this is our uh, modeling that we're doing the re with uh, regression. We did three different approaches. The first one was a step test with a graphical fit. The second one was regression using that same model but using an optimizer to obtain those parameters. And then the third one was regression with a physics-based model. So you could circle you know, either one of these for the physics-based model. OK, the next uh, thing that we're going to be looking at, uh, the next section of this, is going to be the controller development. Once we have these parameters, we're going to then go down this route and develop a controller and then tune the controller and then have acceptable performance.